Shalom, friends. It's Rabbi Josh Rose. I wanted to share some words of Torah with you about uh, the, to give you a way of thinking about what's happening tonight at Shavuot. We associate Shavuot with Torah learning. There's a tradition of staying up all night. Our friends over at Tish PDX are doing a fabulous um, Shavuot learning celebration over at the Eastside Jewish Commons that you should check out. So there's Torah learning and there's all kinds of wonderful things that are that, that happen, including we eat cheesecake and all kinds of goodness. But the other day I was looking at something that said Shavuot and I had a kind of uh, momentary confusion. I don't know if it's my aging brain or what, but I read it as Savuot. Now Savuot, for those who uh, know Hebrew, you'll recognize that Savuot and Shavuot look exactly the same on paper, if you're looking without the points in the text, uh, but they have two completely different meanings. Shavuot, which is part of the holiday, the name of the holiday comes from the word for weeks, as in seven days, weeks, because it refers to this seven-week period between Passover and the holiday. And um, But Savuot would mean, I won't bore you with the grammar details, but it's, uh, it means something like satisfied or, sa or, or, or um, sated or satiated. And uh, so I just, this little brain mistake got me thinking about what is the connection between Savuot and Shavuot? What, what can we glean from this mistake? So, uh, and, I, and, and uh, I got to thinking there's cheesecake that we were supposed to eat on Shavuot. There's all this tradition of eating yummy dairy. Um, and we should all have delicious things. And if we're lactose intolerant, lactose <laughs> intolerant, we should have other delicious things. Uh, but there is this tradition of eating and celebrating the spiritual holiday. And the Talmud actually talks about Rav Yosef teaches us in the Talmud that he says Shavuot is such a great holiday that we should mark it with a with a big meal. Rashi, a Torah commentator, tells us that that uh, we should have a big suuda. Or at least Rav Yosef was telling us we should. So what's this about? Is there what is what is this thing about food and eating? Well, I think there's something interesting about uh, and essential to understanding. Once we get past all the details of Shavuot, like what, why are we learning? What's it really all about? Why are we gathering together? Um, is it just about the cheesecake? Is it even just about enjoying the Torah? Is it even just about being connected to other people and having a, a positive experience that night? Well, I think it points towards something bigger than that, that we can get to if we focus on this misreading of uh, Savuot, of being satiated, the holiday of satiation on my, on my misreading, or the holiday of satisfaction. And that is, that is this. Uh, there's a beautiful reading, interpretation of a teaching of the Kabbalah, um, from the early, tw early 20th cent century um, by Rav Ashlag. Uh, he wrote a book called the Sulam. And I think he lived in the 20s and 30s, 1920s and 30s. And he says that really what the Kabbalah is teaching is that to be a created being, to be a person, and it would apply also to a plant, an animal, but let's talk about people, um, is to be someone who receives, who's constantly taking phone calls or whatever else it might be. And, um, but to be a fully spiritual being, to be a, a, a person who's realized their ultimate purpose is to overcome that and to be, become a person who uh, is constantly giving. Not just giving out tzedakah or giving food, those, the, although those are things we should do too, but who is moving through the world in, in such a way that they're not thinking all the time about what do I want, what will make me happy, but rather they are giving. And only when we do that, we give of ourselves and our personality and the way we talk to other people and the way we look at other people, the way we, we approach our whole world, only when we do that will we be fully satisfied because that's only when we can overcome our, our more limited nature, according to his reading of the Kabbalah. And there's something really so profound about this because um, it's when we're when we're in our place of, of ego, when we're in our place of focusing on our on our own wants, whether it's our appetites or whether we're looking for external external validation at work or in social life by right, some external measure, we're constantly trying to take from the world, and that is a bottomless pit of need uh, that we so often move out of, and that's where fear comes from, that's where anxiety comes from, that's where 
Um, that's where cruelty comes from. We're constantly trying to take from the world. And when we can overcome that and come to a place where we really feel whole in ourselves and satisfied and, and we realize that we have everything we need and we're satiated materially and in other ways, then we can begin to give to the world, to give to those around us, to be a source of light and kindness and generosity and joy to the people around us because we're no longer so focused on ourselves. And he says that, in fact, when we do that, we're becoming, we're ascending, we're almost, we're, we're, we're ascending and almost transcending the, the realm of the physical because we're becoming like God. God, because God was not a created being, according to the teaching of the Sulam, um, God is constantly in the mode of giving. God constantly gives life force into the universe. Uh, and if you don't like the word God, replace it with whatever, what is it out there that's making the plants grow and that's sustaining us and that's making the universe uh, hold together, um, that's constantly providing the possibility of hope and of, of bettering our own lives. Not that we always take advantage of it but that the possibility for goodness is always there. What is it that's constantly restoring us, that's giving into the world? Um, that is, according to the Kabbalah, that is, the, that is God. And so when created beings, those who take, become like God, they move towards the direction of, of trying to give and trying to provide for others and trying to give back into the world. But we can only do that when we really feel satisfied. Not by satisfying our material wants, although we have a right to those things and we have a right to take pleasure in the world and to enjoy its delights. But when we move beyond that, we feel whole in ourselves, we feel complete. We're not moving from a place of brokenness and need and yearning for our own self-satisfaction, but then we can begin to give. And interestingly, and I'll close on this note, that the Torah, that we refer to the holiday of Shavuot, not... Uh, not with Kabbalat, the phrase Kabbalata Torah, which would mean receiving of the Torah, which indeed it is marked that moment, but that's not actually the nickname we give it. We give it the name of Matana Torah. We focus on the giving of the Torah because we're, we're perhaps a way to look at it is rather than looking from our need of even wanting even the spiritual gift, we're focusing on the beauty of, of the divine gift of giving energy and uh, teaching into the world. And it's that that we're trying to replicate. So maybe a practical lesson from this deliberate misreading of uh, the holiday of, of satisfaction is that um, even as we try to fill ourselves up with cheesecake and even as we try to fill, up, fill ourselves up with friends and even as we try to fill ourselves up with spiritual teaching, it's also important to take stock of when we can say, hmm, it's good. I have enough. I have enough now. I, I don't have to continue to fill myself up with these externals. I, I have enough, and now I can turn to the world, and I can be a source of generosity, a source of giving, because I'm not moving from a place of need. I'm moving from a place of satisfaction. I'm not looking to receive. Now it's time to give. So eat a lot of cheesecake, hang out with a lot of good people, learn a lot of deep Torah, and Let's try to come out of this with a sense of what we have and how we can position ourselves as those who are living with abundance and giving. If you have not done so yet, I encourage you to uh, go to collabpdx.org slash psychedelic and register for what will be an incredible rich day of, uh, of teaching, of Jewish practice, of discussion of intergenerational Jewish trauma and psychedelic-assisted therapy, of um, embodied Jewish practice, of movement, and also a day of fun and joy. And uh, I will also be teaching there, among other incredible teachers. Um, and if you go to the website, colabpdx.org slash psychedelic, you can learn about some of these visiting teachers. Thank you so much for listening. Chag Sameach.